Hello everyone. I wanted to share with you a piece of a lesson from our uh, membership site. This is about the PicoScope gap. The reason I'm sharing it online here for free is because I feel it's super important that everybody understands uh, what is the PicoScope gap and how to avoid it. So I don't want anybody bashing a PicoScope for no reason. Now when we're speaking of our triggers, our triggers are super important to get rid of what people call the PicoScope gap. Many people criticize the PicoScope as having some sort of fault, like it misses data or it loses data. That is simply not true. They're just bashing it or they don't understand how to use it properly. Here I have an Arduino set up with a output here of a signal like this. So you see we have uh, some generic signal. It's not even a true camera crank signal from any vehicle. This is just a, a, a pattern that's repeatable, as you see here. Now I want you to see I have a, a, a bug set up. I can kill this. If I push down this one button, if I just tap this one button, you can see that I'm killing that uh, blue signal, channel A, and if I tap this other button, I can kill channel B, okay? Now, what I want you to see here is as our buffer fills up, I'm gonna hit the stop button and start fresh again. I don't have any trigger selected at this point. I'm gonna tap this blue button right now, but I'm also gonna tap it right now. Now, if you can see, I actually tap that button in what's called the Pico Gap. This is missing information between buffer frame one. If I zoom in here, there's nothing missing at the end. And if I go to buffer frame two, I'm using my zoom tool here. I zoom in, there's nothing missing here. What happened? That's called the Pico gap. Well, how do we eliminate that gap? Like if you were trying to capture a stall on a vehicle and a scope's running and you're trying to catch a sputter, not even a stall, but just, hey, this thing acts up every once in a while and stalls, but it happened right there. Well, it happened at that Pico gap. We missed that data. How do we eliminate that? Let me tell you, we're gonna use a trigger. We can use a trigger set to repeat or single, either one, to eliminate ever missing any data. So let's pretend that we're setting the scope up for uh, two seconds of division, so we got 10 seconds of time on our screen. We're gonna go ahead and set a trigger to repeat. And what we're gonna do is put our trigger out of reach. We're gonna put it somewhere that it would never be reached by the scope. We're never gonna have this pattern go up this high. So once this buffer gets filled up, you can see we have that rolling pattern. So we have ourselves two seconds of vision. We have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and some change on the screen here. Now, if this vehicle is running and you're trying to catch an intermittent bobble or misfire and you got this hooked up to your crank sensor and your cam sensor, and you're trying to figure out which one, the scope isn't automatically gonna stop at this point. We don't have a, a trigger set up to capture, say, uh, an event. But if you hear this car running rough and it started running rough for a second, and I'm having a misfire, it's running rough, and then all of a sudden I go walking back from the other side of the shop to hit the stop button on my scope, do you see that we never lost any data? We have all this data where that problem happened. This is how you eliminate the Pico scope gap by having your scope set to repeat, put the trigger out of reach, and you can catch your, capture as much data as you want. So here's an example with Pico scope six set up. I've got 20 seconds per division, four million sample request, and this is just rolling along here. My trigger's on uh, repeat, and as you see, we have a boatload of data on the screen and we're not gonna lose any dropouts, okay? I'll show you here, as this scope is rolling, you, you could be away from a vehicle and it's stalled out. As long as you get back to it within three minutes, you've got the data. So like, let's say this car was running, this vehicle was running, and it's, you're wondering, well, what's going on? Is it the cam sensor or crank sensor? Or is it both? Or what's going on with it? If I just create a fault here, I, I'm creating a fault and you may be able to see it in the screen, maybe not, but I'm just creating a little fault here, and then all of a sudden I'm gonna kill it, okay? So let's take a look. We would stop our scope, and in this instance, it's extremely important that you save it. You go to file, and then you wanna save as, and save it as all the information uh, that you want, and we just put testing here. You wanna save that, because if you don't save it, um, you will lose all that information. So you always save it before you go messing around if you have a important capture. And one of these inter intermittent problems would be an important capture. I hope this little mini lesson helped you out. This is just a small section of a 20 minute lesson on triggers in our PicoScope course. All of our courses are available for $10 a month at handsonautotraining.com. Go under courses and sign up. Have a great day.